Now that we have a basic prototype, we'll be modifying it with some custom animations. This video will focus on using functional motion to increase the usability of the ad subscription flow. We'll see how motion can be used to provide feedback and indicate the progress that someone's made. To do this, we'll be using Studio's custom motion transitions and timeline editor. We saw in the last video that the preset transitions gave us a good way to make sure we were moving in the right direction, but now's our chance to customize these animations even further. The first thing we'll do is add a hover state to our subscription selection. So we'll take the first page, copy and paste it, command R to rename, and we'll just add dash hover. The hover state we can keep pretty subtle, so I'll select this bar at the top of the item and double it, putting it to eight pixels. And then if we go back to the first one, we can see we already have the click trigger and we'll change that to mouse over. Mouse over is essentially the same as hovering into an object and mouse out is hovering out of an object. So we'll change that to mouse over and then now we wanna to navigate to the hover state. If we go over to the hover state, we'll leave that click trigger, but we'll create a new interaction that goes back to the first page if someone hovers outside of that object. So now you can see we have two interactions on this page. If someone clicks, it'll take them to the next page of the flow, but if someone hovers out, then it'll take them back to the default state. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna change both of these to motion, and then we'll change our first one to motion as well. So let's see what this looks like. So now without even going to the motion editor, we have both a hover state and a click state that have some motion to them. The trick here is to make sure you have all of your folders and all of your layers named properly. Studio uses the folder structure and the folder names to figure out which layers should be connected when they create a motion transition. Now let's create a motion interaction for when someone goes to the next modal. We'll select the next button and preview it. Another way to preview it is to go to edit timeline. That takes us into the timeline editor, but it also lets us preview the animation. So I'll hit play, and we can see this doesn't look exactly like what we wanted it to do. We wanted it to slide in from the right. So what we need to do is exit the editor and basically replicate each of these modals on the opposite page. So if we want this to come in from the right, we'll copy it to the previous page and then move it all the way to the right. Similarly, we can copy this one from the first page put it on the second page, and then move it all the way to the left. So now if we open our timeline again and preview it, it looks pretty much the same. What we need to do is just hit auto link layers in the top right. Now that we've done that, we've got some motion. And then similarly for the next part of the flow, we'll paste this one, move it to the right, paste this one, and move it to the left. And then this time, if we just change it to motion, it should be good to go. All right, and then the final step is gonna be getting into and out of the modals. So we had the default slide up and slide down transitions. So let's do something pretty similar to that when we customize it. So to do that, we'll need to copy the modal over and then drop it all the way down to the bottom. We'll change that to motion. And then similarly to the end of the flow, we'll copy the final modal and move it to the bottom. And then we'll go back and change this to motion as well. So now let's preview our whole flow. And there we go, with just a couple clicks, we've got some motion. Now let's add a bit more customization to these. One thing that I noticed was that our hover interaction was pretty slow. Since it's only moving four pixels, we don't really need the animation to take that long. Longer animation will make a lot more sense if it's a bigger transition. So if we go back over to that interaction, we can see in the overview, there's options for duration and delay. Duration is how long the animation takes, so it's taking 0.7 seconds to move only four pixels and then delay is any pause that will happen once someone does the trigger. So we wanna keep that at zero. We want this to happen instantly, but we can bump this down from 0.7 to 0.3 or so. So let's take a look at what that looks like. And that looks a lot better. 
We're giving feedback that they hovered, but we don't need them to wait around for such a small animation. So if we go back out, let's add one more interaction. This is gonna be an interaction if someone clicks out of that specific service. So we'll take them back to the hover state, we'll select motion, and we'll leave it at 0.7 for right now. We'll jump right into the timeline and see how it looks. All right, so that looks pretty good. We can make it a little bit quicker though, I think. One thing we can do, instead of changing the duration on the overview, we can change it in the editor. So I'll drag this down to 0.4 or so. A lot of times if it's an interaction that's unselecting something or it's an exit state, it can happen a little faster than the initial state because the user already has an expectation of what should happen. So let's just look at a couple more things in the timeline editor and then we can preview our whole flow. On the left hand side, we've got this repeat or refresh button. Basically what that does is that will loop the animation. So if I select that and hit play, you can see our animation is happening over and over. I'll pause that for now. And actually I wanna slow it down. So I'll select this and let's go to point two. This doesn't actually change the speed of the animation. It just changes how fast the preview is so we can see some of the specifics. And then you can see if I hover over the main section of the timeline, I get this arrow cursor. That just shows that I can expand or contract this. Again, it doesn't actually change the time that the animation takes, it just changes how we view it. These icons on the right will change how we view the timeline as well. For this app, it makes sense that it's on the bottom since it's a desktop app, but if you're designing a mobile app, a lot of times it'll make sense if it's on the left-hand side. So that takes up a lot of space, but we can actually resize it. Now that we've got a good overview of the timeline editor, let's preview our ad subscription flow. So I'll hit add subscription. You can see it comes in from the bottom. If I hover, we've got that quicker animation. And then if I click, it's pretty slow, but if I unclick it, it happens a little faster. I'll select it again though, and then hit next. And then same thing here, we've got the animation swiping to the left. And then as I finish it, it drops back down to the bottom. So this is an example of where the different types of motion overlap. Since we know the ad subscription modals will always live below the actual app, that's a good example of structural motion. Every time someone hits add subscription, it'll pop up from the bottom and then they'll be able to go through that same flow. By giving some context and letting people know what to expect, it can make your users feel more empowered and make your app easier to use. So now that we've gotten a good idea of how the motion transitions and timeline editor work, I hope you're starting to get a good sense for how powerful it is. In the next video, we're gonna dive even deeper and explore how we can adjust some of the timing of specific elements.